Today's lessons on drawing nets and finding the surface area of the nets of prisms, which are three-dimensional shapes. So first, we need to understand what a prism is. Prisms look like this, where we've got six sides of a rectangular prism. The reason this is called a rectangular prism is because the base of this prism is going to be a rectangle. When you're figuring out the bases of prisms, you're looking for what shape shows up twice and they'll never cross. So if you look at this blue rectangle here, it has the exact same thing on the other side. That tells me that the base of this shape is going to be a rectangle. When we look at triangular prisms, now all of a sudden we have this three-dimensional shape, but the only shape that shows up two times and it's exactly the same size, are the triangles. And these triangles are never going to cross. We'll talk about those in a little bit. But first, we're going to start talking about just a rectangular prism and trying to find the surface area of that. So now, what you kind of need to take into consideration are a couple things. When you're drawing a rectangular prism, it should have six total rectangles. Those are called faces. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, which means my net should have six rectangles all together. Now, the easiest thing to do with a rectangular prism is we can automatically assume there are going to be four rectangles through the middle. So what I would do is draw one big rectangle, and then I would cut that into four little rectangles. That would be the, the middle part of it. So now all rectangular prisms also have a little flap on one side, and the other side has to have that same exact little flap. All rectangular prisms are going to look very similar to this. So if it's easier, I would just kind of start drawing this out. The labeling part's the trickier part. So Next, what I would focus on is one rectangle. A lot of times for me, the bottom is the easiest to focus on. I see that first. So what I would do is shade in the one that we're going to use. So I'm going to shade in that bottom rectangle, and that's going to tell me this is what I'm going to use. So usually what I do is I label this as my base. This is going to be the front. This is going to be the back, or sorry, this is going to be, yeah, the back, top, I mean, um, and then this one's going to be the back. And then these are your two sides. Start by labeling the base. I notice this is 8 meters. So across is going to be 8, so I'm going to label this as 8 meters. The side length of that one rectangle is 7, so I'm going to label this one as 7 meters. We can also label the sides. So now i am labeled my base, I'm going to go to the side. My side lengths are 7 and 4. If I have this one labeled as 7, I'm going to say this one is 4 meters. We can fill in a majority of my net now. So if this is 8 and 7, this one's going to be 7 meters, this is 7 meters, and this is 7 meters. All the way down, these are all the same length. So this is going to be 8 meters, 8 meters, 8 meters, and 8 meters. The only parts we're really missing now are all of these side lengths. So now the biggest thing to understand is when your oh, and the sides are the same. So we've got 4 meters and 4 meters. If I were to fold this up and I fold this up, my fingers come to an edge. That means that this needs to be the same length as this. Those need to match. So this one's going to be 4 meters, 
which means this one's four meters. A nice thing to keep in mind, the lines along the side alternate. So if this is four and this is seven, this one is going to be four and this one's going to be seven. Now, all of these are labeled. So to find surface area, we're going to find the areas of each of our shapes and we're going to add them together. So to find the area of a rectangle, we just have to do base times height. So for the top one, I've got 4 times 8, which is 32. 7 times 8 is 56. 4 times 8, 32. 7 times 8, 56. Now we've got 7 times 4 is 28. And 7 times 4 is 28. Surface area is the total area of all of the faces, so we're going to add all those up. Got 32 plus 56 plus 32 plus 56 plus 28 plus 28. 2 plus 6 is 8. 8 plus 2 is 10. 10 plus 6 is 16. 16 plus 8 is 24, and 24 plus 8 is 32. So we're going to have a 2, carry up the 3. 3 plus 3 is 6, plus 5 is 11. 11 plus 3 is 14. 14 plus 5 is 19. 19 plus 2 is 21, and 21 plus 2 is 23. All areas are labeled squared. So my surface area is 232 meters squared. That's a rectangular prism. So now if we move down the sheet here, now I've got a triangular prism. And it's going to be very similar. So with a triangular prism, we need to figure out all the different shapes I'm going to be drawing. So if we're looking at this triangular prism, I know I've got two triangles. And I've got one, two, three different rectangles. The rectangles are going to go through the middle. So we're going to, again, very similar to the rectangular prism, we're going to draw our rectangles through the middle. But now I only need three rectangles. I do not need four. I have two triangles that I need to take note of. So I'm going to draw one triangle on one side, I'm going to draw one triangle on the other side. Biggest thing is focusing on the triangle when we're drawing this. So if I look at this shape here and I outline my triangle and I just redraw the triangle down here, I'm going to go through and label that. The bottom of the triangle, so the bottom of the triangle here, is 5. So I'm going to label this as 5 feet. If I go to the side, this side length here is 4 feet. So I'm going to label that as 4 feet. This one is not labeled on this. However, when you look behind it, this triangle should be exactly the same. If this side isn't labeled, look at this one here. This one is 3 which means this one's three, so three feet should go here. <clears throat> I also want to draw in the height of the triangle, which they told me is two feet. And I'm going to take this, and I'm going to put it over here. So the base was five, so I've got five feet. This side is four feet, and this side is three feet. And my height was two feet. The nice thing with triangular prisms is they kind of go along the same lines as how we were labeling the rectangular one. When you fold the triangle up and you fold this flap up, those corners meet, which means three needs to meet with this side here. 
So they need to be the same, meaning this is going to be three feet as well. Same thing goes over here. If this needs to match with this, and this is four feet, this one's also going to be four feet. The only other one we need to take into consideration is if I have a triangle in front here, and I'm looking for the triangle back here, these lengths on the net are the distance from one triangle to the other, which means the distance from one triangle to the other is here. So those lengths are going to be these ones. I never filled that in, but we're going to say that's 10 feet, which means all of these are 10 feet long. Now to find surface area, we want to do the exact same thing we did with the rectangular prism. So we're going to take area of the rectangle, 3 times 10 is 30. I've got 5 times 10, which is 50. 4 times 10 is 40. And then to find the area of a triangle, we have to do base times height times 1 half. My base is 5. My height is 2. So we're going 1 half, 5 times 2. Half of 10 is 5. So the areas of my triangles are 5 feet. And now we're going to add them all up. So we've got 30 plus 50, which is 80. Then I'm going to take 80 plus 40, which is 120. And then 120 plus 5 is 125. 125 plus 5 is 130 feet squared. Again, area is always squared. So that's drawing nets of both triangular and rectangular prisms. Again, labeling is the hardest part, but as soon as you can start coming up with a label, everything else should fall into place.